Wouldn't it be lovely to be able to go for a ride for hours and not get tired, to feel no fatigue? Wake up the following day and know that you are fresh faced and ready to go again. It'd be like the holy grail, knowing that you could just wake up and the stuff you'd done the previous day didn't affect you. Well, luckily today I've got some great handy hints and tips to help combat you getting tired so that hopefully you'll just be able to keep going on and on and enjoy those rides a lot longer. You're in your buddies, the route is set, but an hour or so in, your legs are cramping and feel like absolute lead. What's the trick here? Well, tip number one, a thorough warm up. <sighs> okay, so we're talking stretching. It's the best way to warm up. And I don't mean reaching for the biscuit tin or a quick like, touch your toes and you're done. I mean a proper thorough stretch. Hold each stretch for at least a minute or so. Concentrate on all the major muscle groups you're gonna use in cycling and try and do it all over the body. So upper body, lower body, the full works. It's gonna really, really help avoid any kind of muscle damage. Uh, it'll help when you crash because you're all limbered up so you'll bounce a little bit better rather than just stopping like a rock. And it's really, really good for just avoiding fatigue in general. A lot of pro racers do it and they even actually use things like turbo trainers as well to thoroughly warm up and get the blood pumping through their body as well. I got a quick stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk nutrition and hydration then when tackling those tiredness woes. Think of yourself as an electric car. If you leave the house in the morning and the battery's already half empty, you're not gonna get very far and you're gonna have to stop sooner and wait for longer to fully recharge because the batteries are gonna be in the red. Where, as if you leave the house fully charged, ready to go, then when you do stop, the battery's only gonna be at half, if you say, so it's not gonna take as long to recharge. Just like your body, stopping littler and more often constantly taking a bite to eat and a bit drink will keep you going for longer and longer rather than sending you down into the red. Make sure you leave the house with at least a 500 ml bottle full and ready to go. And if you're doing a really long ride then there are places to stop along the way where you can top up said bottle. If you're feeling really healthy and it is gonna be a big, big ride or it's hot and you need to replace salts and electrolytes and things, you might wanna think about some little energy tabs, some electrolyte tabs that can go in your drink. Make sure as well that you have at least one bar. I like to carry two bars so that I'm prepared for a long time. Again, if I don't come by a shop or something like that, got this in your back pocket for emergencies. If you have been riding a really long time, you might need a sugar hit. So a Coca-Cola or something else fizzy and sugary can stop you from bonking and get you out of those emergency situations. Again, an energy bar, something that's got lots of carbs in can keep you going. Uh, there's no point consuming too many carbs because your body can only uh, digest and process so many. So something like that, bit of sugar, got me a spare 500 as well. So I am well prepared now for a nice long ride. Hey, try to set aside a little bit of time each week or after a particularly hard ride to do something non-bike related, just to give your body that downtime that it might need. If, however, you do want to keep active and keep doing something, try something low impact. Try a bit of yoga, a bit of swimming, or do some of those stretches you've probably been putting off for far too long. If you do want to take your recovery to the next level, however, there are things you can do to help it along the way. Things such as compression wear, ice baths, which trust me are horrible, but they are very effective. Also look at your nutrition and hydration pre, during and post ride. Things like protein shakes after a ride are really going to help the muscles rebuild and repair any damage that may have helped with them. Also getting those carbs back in your body and topping up those energy stores as well. E-bikes can be a wondrous tool for avoiding that tiredness. I mean, you've got a motor. If you feel like going further, longer and not getting as tired, then an e-bike could be the one for you. It's well known that a lot of pro downhillers and XC riders will use e-bikes during their training so they can still get out there and put in the miles and bike time without suffering the consequences of what the ride may normally put on the body if it was a normal bike. Now, this may not be an easy one for a lot of us to do as let's face it, e-bikes aren't cheap and we don't all have multiple bikes. But every now and again, if you still want to get the mileage in and you're heading to a trail center or something similar, what about hiring one? I should say before all the e-bike riders pipe up that you can still get a good workout on an e-bike though. It's not all fun and games cruising around in turbo. They can be great for pushing it on as well. <sighs> ah! Whew. Whew. 
Well, do you find you've got the desire to ride for ages, but just not quite got the stamina when you're on those really big rides? Well, a great way of avoiding that sort of tiredness throughout the long ride is actually either stopping and taking little and often breaks or pacing yourself when you're on the ride itself. Firing out the blocks, all guns blazing, well, it's only going to backfire down the line in probably the not too distant future when you blow up and you've got no energy to carry on. Let's talk heart rate then. This is a great tip for keeping an eye on just how tired you're feeling. No one knows your body like you do. So when you're out on those big rides, just if you feel like your heart rate is getting too high, just back it off a touch. If you want to get really accurate, then you could get a heart rate monitor. That's going to give you a definitive number to look at. So if you find out what kind of comfortable rate you can push for a long time, then you can check on your device, be it with a strap or a watch, what that number is and then try and stick to it, giving you the best chance of riding for longer. If you're a real tech ed, then you might want to look at a power meter. Power is the best way of measuring or representing what actual effort you're putting in. Again, like a heart rate, if you can find out or do a test as to what kind of power or wattage you can hold for a sustainable amount of time, then by looking on your Garmin or other device, you can really then monitor exactly how much effort's being put out, making sure you don't go too far. Combine that with heart rate, well, then you have got many, many numbers to delve into and really keep an eye on. Well, that is it. That's done and dusted for this video. I think it's time I took some of my own advice and had a little break myself, but I hope you've liked it. Hope I've managed to help you tackle that tiredness the next time you're out putting in the miles. And, you know, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to see more great GMBN content, hit subscribe. And also, why not head over to the GMBN shop where our new Stargazer line of casual wear is available to buy. But that's it. I'm resting. Thank you very much, everyone, and I'll catch you next time.